Welcome to Life Stories with Grace Cancer and Moise J, a place where we share topics about things that concern us in daily life. And after discussing these things, you contribute through the uh, comment section, uh, you like, you share your own stories, and at the end of the day, we grow together, we thrive, and we become the best versions of ourselves. And uh, if I want to welcome those who are coming here for the very first time. If it is your first time, welcome. Kindly like, share, uh, if you find this video useful, and uh, give us a comment and share your own experience so that we can also learn from you. And for all the returning guests, thank you. You make my heart glad. Okay, our topic for discussion today is healing from a broken relationships. Now, there are different types of relationships that we have in our lives. One, these are love relationships between uh, people who are married and they are living together and they are so much in love. Now, I'm going to talk about those specifically healing from relationships where love was the binding factor and they were so connected and they were together. I am also talking about the relationships of couples who are dating, who are in courtship, and they are planning and looking at spending the rest of their lives together, and they are anticipating so many good things to happen to them. And yes, they are so hopeful because they love each other. We will also look at relationships, uh, about uh, relationship sibling to sibling, or children to parents. Now, some of these relationships also go so sour that there is need for healing for all the people involved in these relationships. Let's look at a young couple. They have just met. They are smitten in love. They are committed to each other, and they feel they cannot even live without each other. They want to be together all this while, they have even started planning together. In most cases, they even wear the same clothes, you know? They wear uniforms. I don't know whether you call them uniforms or they call it twinning. You know, they have started twinning and the future looks so bright ahead of them. Probably they have even decided to join uh, their bank accounts so they withdraw money from uh, a single account. And you know, they are so committed to each other and they are so... Uh, you know, they are so in, intertwined, their hearts are so connected, and they do not see anything that can separate them. Same things in marriage. You know, you're married, you've just wedded, he gave you the ring, maybe you're the mother of his children, maybe you're the father of the children, or maybe the children have not yet come, but you're planning together and you're so in love, you cannot think of any other thing except that your dreams have come to, have come true. Another set is where the father have children or the mothers have children, either uh, you know biological or, or adopted, and you love these children so much. You see your future in the success of these children as they grow up. Or maybe as a child, you're looking at your parents, you see your future coming to pass, your dreams coming true because you have the support of your parents at all times. And then things happen. Things happen, the girl you loved so much doesn't love you anymore. Or the guy you loved so much doesn't need you anywhere close to him anymore. Or maybe this gentleman that married you and promised you heaven on earth has finally left the home. He doesn't want to have anything to do with you anymore. Oh, the lady you so loved, the lady you cherished, the lady you, you felt your world revolves around her, doesn't need you in the house anymore. She wants to go. She has found another person. He has found another gentleman. Your father maybe has left the home. He has gone to marry another woman. He doesn't want your mother anymore. Or your mother has left you. He doesn't want anything to do with you anymore. And you are left in that space of brokenness. Now, let me tell you about brokenness. 
brokenness can hurt it can harm it brings pain to the deepest part of your heart that you will even feel inside your bleeding when actually nothing is coming out you can feel you are crying the pain is too much but the tears instead of coming through your eyes they are going inside heartbreaks are the most difficult things that an individual can deal with what happens when someone is heartbroken there is betrayal someone has betrayed you someone has cut you emotionally because your emotions were connected to him to a level that you felt you are one at this level and now you feel that a part of you has been taken away probably you have shared so much as a married couple you have shared your body you have loved each other you've made love and a part of you is with the other person and now this person is saying it is over this person is saying i don't love you anymore this person is saying this relationship was a mistake the pain that comes through this if someone is not helped then they are going to have challenges in their mental health someone will go depressed someone will run crazy they say someone has lost the wires they say someone doesn't want anything to do with men or women anymore because their trust has been broken their love has been crushed what they offered has been rejected and so they are in that space where they feel they are so rejected now we should meet such a person in most cases we are quick to give statements oh just move on it was just a, a relationship you'll pick another person it is not as easy as that you don't just move on it's not as easy as just a relationship this person invested emotionally they invested their everything and so they are connected to this person that has just thrown them to the cold how do we help when we find a person that whose relationship has just failed and they need to heal the first thing a person needs to know is that the relationship has come to an end many times these people grapple with the fact that they want to try it again they keep begging they keep pleading they keep asking for another chance and it is not given the first thing this person needs to know and to accept is that, that the relationship is gone and so what remains now is for them to get to terms with it to have their hearts healed to accept that fact and once the person has accepted the fact and has gone out of that panic mode has gone out of the anger has gone out of the of the of, you know there is the cursing that comes on once the person accepts that the relationship is done is over is gone okay is it's not coming again then that is the first step then the person can be told that they can slowly pick their pieces and move on. But number one, the person needs to get to terms with the fact that the relationship is over. Number two, this person who is hurting so deeply, whose mental state is not okay, who is depressed, who has probably even developed bipolar uh, dysfunction, you know, uh, symptoms that person needs to understand you need to make them understand that the fact that this other person has rejected them how they have defined them that is not who they are they should not use the lens of the person who has rejected them they rejected them to define who they are who you are, you're created in the image of God, you're fearful and wonderfully made, you're beautiful, you're handsome. And so the fact that this person has rejected you doesn't make you any less of a person. Keep the values, your value of who you are by what God says about you.
you're fearfully and wonderfully made. So don't suffer what the other person throws at you. The person who rejects you doesn't define who you are. Actually, they maybe they have missed a best opportunity. Maybe it was good riddance that they left you. Maybe they were not good enough for you. But the fact that they have rejected you doesn't make you any less of a human being. And so pick your pieces and know who you are. A better person will come. Number three, I have seen many cases where uh, either girls or boys, they keep wishing the person who rejected them suffers. They wish they never it never gets well with them. They wish this person can even fall down and, uh, you know, fail at work. They even follow them at work to make sure they fail. And they are so angry. I want to encourage you. For you to heal and to be a better version of yourself. Okay? You just need to pick the good memories you shared with this person. If you have a child with this person, concentrate on, on thanking God for this child. If you don't have a child, think about the memories, the good things they said about you, the good times you had together. Concentrate on those and let them be. The more you wish them bad, the more you wish them to suffer, the more you wish them to fall sick, the more you wish them all trouble to come upon them. When you see them okay, you will hurt. And so I encourage you, don't wish them bad. The, the chapter in your life was over and it is done, it is done. They have gone, they have gone. So relax. Think about the good memories. Heal, because the good memories will heal and you will let go. And once you have let go, thinking about the good memories, you will forgive. And then you will create new space for a new person. And when that person comes in, he will not find you. She will not find you with luggage, with baggage, with bitterness, with hate. They will find you a free person and you will start on a new chapter of your life. I wish you good healing. I wish you good, I wish you good love. And I pray that you will never have to go through a heartbreak. But just in case it happens, remember the things that we talked about. You will still heal, pick your pieces and move on to a better life uh, with another person. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, like, and share this video and help it to grow. Bye-bye for now.